Oh, Richard, what have we got here? <laughs> got a lot of demonstration for you. Thought we'd talk about wet basements. Oh, I hate wet basements. I know, most people do. You know, only 40% of American houses actually have a basement at all. That few? Right. And 60% of them are wet. That's me. Okay. I, I got one. So the challenge is it's a bunch of jurisdictions we have to think about. You know, we're trying to keep water from coming from outside in generally. And it could be groundwater, it could be uh, coming up this way, it could be from snow. So let's start outside the building to keep it outside. It could be in the jurisdiction of the landscaper. It may be that the grade comes towards the house and mm. snow and rain comes this way, trying to work its way in. So you at least have downspout extensions that can make that water convey away. I don't think people realize that thousands of gallons of water could come off your roof in a rainstorm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now it comes down and you, and you try to get it away, but sometimes you just can't. The grade doesn't allow it. So many people, it's a big industry in this country, might do a French drain around the outside of the building. In that case, all that water that gets collected, it moves its way without a pump to daylight. Yeah. And that's great if you can do it. If you can do it. So that's all the the sort of the water that you can control, but there's also water vapor that wants right. to work its way through. So think about the construction material of any foundation. It's either poured concrete, concrete block, or rubble stone. None of those are watertight. They're porous too, Absolutely. right? I mean, so, you can get right. vapor going through them. So people will try to seal that up with all sorts of hydraulic cement or epoxy paints to try and control that. And you really have to because mold is gonna grow anytime you have three things. Moisture, temperature, and organic material. Now, organic materials in almost everything that we build a house with, right? Two by fours. Oh yeah. The backside of sheetrock. Yeah. All paper, that stuff. wood. Right. right okay. All that stuff. So if you got this water vapor moving through, moving through, well, let's let's do this. Let's try to seal it with maybe with poly up against the foundation wall to try and make that water stay up, and it condenses and works its way down into here and goes away. But you also have the issue with coming up through the floor. They make this material, which is pretty interesting. It's got a standoff right here. And that just keeps it up. This acts as a bit of a vapor barrier. And so now you've, you've got a little bit of organic material here, but at least you've got a place for moisture to stay and not wick and condense up into the room. Right, so that, that's the barrier right there. Yeah. And the standoffs allow for air movement. That's right, which a might, little bit of air A little bit of drying, yeah, yeah. something like that. And just keep, keep them wicking up. So, gotcha. so let's talk about humidity, the amount of humidity. You know, we, we need some humidity, but we don't need too much. We all know what 100% humidity is. Oh. You brought your okay. steamer. I did. <laughs> you so there's a hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. I should actually take it off. Um, so that's a hundred percent. You can see it; and it's visible. And we certainly would know zero percent in the American Southwest. Everything you touch, you get electric static. You're really looking for this happy place. About twenty-five to thirty percent is the best place for a human and for the building to have a little bit of moisture in it. Okay. Too much, and you start getting into the place where that mold really wants to build. Right, and it's just uncomfortable. Sixty, seventy percent right. humidity in the basement is right. just gross. Right. So, most people, their only choice is some sort of dehumidifier. And I just got to tell you, I got to tell you, the dehumidifier is really nothing more than an air conditioner that doesn't quite have enough power to actually cool the air. It just has a cold enough coil for water to condense and come out of solution. Okay. Think about a cold glass uh, filled with ice water on a hot day, water will always form because this is a colder surface. And that's right. what happens inside of a dehumidifier. So these are measured also in pints. The, you know, uh, you can get residential portable dehumidifiers that can take up to 50 pints per day, 50 oh, of these. That's a good Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> a residential built-in unit can do 100 pints or more in a day. But in the residential ones, they're pretty straightforward. Power button here. Here's your humidity readout and plus or minus for your desired setting. What's happening is it is pulling in moist air right here. It's pulling it across. Do you see this coil right here? This will get cold, right? And what will happen is water will drop down into a bucket right here and the dehumidified air will come out here into the room. So yep. that moist air hits the coil and right. that's where the condensation... Condenses, condenses, condenses and just drops into a bucket. So for most people, this is, this is what they have. So there's a bucket underneath it. Yeah. Okay, and when you, when you turn that off, I'm gonna turn this off. For, so this is a so 10, this is a bucket. Pi, 10 pint or right. something like that. So that means with this, you have to come down and change this with some regularity. But they also have a drain connection that allows the water to fall into the bucket. But that drain connection can also be used with a conventional garden hose right here so that you wouldn't have to empty the bucket, the water could convey to a floor drain. So if you've got a, a sink, a utility sink in the basement, and this is sitting on the floor, 
it's not going to work its way up nope. into the sink. So we find people putting these up on shelves at the high point in their garage, high point in their basement. <laughs> is that you? Okay. And so you're limited by gravity. But what they've got nowadays is they've got all these models now that also come with a pump built in. Oh. Okay, so now this so thing not can, just the not just the attachment for the hose, correct. but something to push it out. And this can pump up 16 feet, and once you get to 16 feet by gravity, it'll go the rest of the way. Oh, so, that's so you can pretty much put this in, and never, never worry about it. Just set it for 30, 35, and be done. But you want the right amount of humidity, not too much, not too little. Beautiful. All right, so I gotta control the water and I gotta control the humidity. Which one of these are going to your house? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. All right. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.